Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of the Analytic Mind uh, podcast. So um, really excited to have here with me today, Christian Bubalo. Hopefully I've got uh, that pronunciation right. Christian's from um, based in Switzerland and actually works for the mothership, works for work, works within Microsoft. So really excited to, to dig in a little bit uh, more into uh, into that and you know hopefully get to, uh, some insights into um, the excitement internally at Microsoft around what's going on with the Power Platform. So, Christian, if it's all right, I'll just I'll just throw to you. Why don't you just give a bit more of a um, an introduction um, and um, and talk about some of the things that you've been doing uh, within the Power BI space? Yeah, sure. So, hi everyone from my side as well. Uh, you pronounce it uh, perfectly right. So, Christian Bubalo is my name. As you mentioned, I'm based in Switzerland, working for Microsoft here as a so-called technical specialist intelligence, meaning I'm supporting all kind of enterprise customers when it comes to technical questions around about Power BI. Yeah, and just oh, wow. as a note. <laughs> yeah, just for the next two days, because from the 1st of July, I will switch my role internally, and then I will be a cloud solution architect, but uh, meaning I will be just more a little bit technical than than what I'm doing now. Interesting, interesting. You must have seen some, uh, or had a whole variety, you know, such a diverse range of questions that um, that would be um, pretty good to cover. It would be great to cover, right? Because I think that you've you've, you've probably seen from start to finish, um, you know, a whole range of implementations and then the questions that sort of flow on um, off the back of that. Is there, is there any sort of like main big themes that you've, um, that, that you've seen in, in the discussions you've had with some of the enterprise clients, particularly around Power BI implementations or Power BI architecture? Mm -hmm. um, yes, definitely. I mean, uh, what I have to say as well is I see uh, a shipment from what is Power BI, what I had like three, four years ago. The conversation is moving now, as you mentioned, it's more like administration and governance and how we set Power BI uh, right. And in the last few months, one year, one and a half years, uh, mostly I talk about uh, security. How can we make sure that the, that the data is where it should be? So for example, in Switzerland, banking and financing sector, we have to make sure that the data stays in Switzerland. So this is a must. So therefore, how can we help uh, with Power BI to, to ensure that? Or on the other hand, uh, imagine you have a company with uh, 100,000 uh, employees. How can you manage it? How can you govern it? So it's all about scalability and making sure everyone has the right access and is unable to do what they are allowed to do, but not more. <laughs> Yeah, got it. Now, um, <clears throat> yeah, your Power BI has evolved so much in this enterprise space over the last like eighteen months to two years, even. Um, uh, it, it initially, when you know, when I first started with Power BI, there was there was basically none of these enterprise features, and I'm sure a lot of that uh, feedback came in very very quickly. Uh, and um, pr uh, big improvements have been made on the, in, in this space. Have you seen? Um, what what do you what do you see are some of the key attributes to making um, to onboarding these new features effectively within an organization? Um, you know, you know, from data sets, to data flows, you know, all of these new things that have been added. Like, how what what are some of the the things that businesses and and business users can do collectively to um, to utilize these these great enterprise features if, uh, as effectively as possible? Mm -hmm. um I think one of the best things a, a company can do is to have, let's call it a center of excellence. Uh, so a uh, responsible team, department, or even just one person, whatever, um, which will drive Power BI from an adoption point of view. So meaning every time there is something new, so there is a new kid in the block, uh, that this responsible team will take care of it, have a look into it, and also provide some kind of, let's say, internal webinar or information, or, hey, uh, or let's say for, for all the audience and saying, hey, there is something new. Uh, this is what you can do with it. Uh, feel free to use it if you wish to do so. And what I do, for example, with one of my biggest customers is we run a monthly webinar where I present the latest and greatest. And then we have like a main topic covering whatever it should be like uh, should it be data flow this time next time probably data marts because this is new or we, we're going to talk about apis or whatever suits and uh, we invite everyone who's interested in and i think this is the best way to on one hand on one hand scale 
but on the other hand, also inform all the people who are working with Power BI uh, that there is something new and how to use it. Yeah, nice. No, I, I, I like that. We've um, within Enterprise DNA, we sort of we actually um, call, uh, call our sort of umbrella offering to corporates the center of excellence because we we totally ag agree with that idea. Um, is that there's there's a lot of value in empowering the individual analyst, the individual user, but there there is also a requirement to sort of have a centralized planning strategy governance type um, mechanism within an organization as well. You know, and I think a good term for that is center of excellence, as um, as you, as you say. What are like um you know what what are some other things? Is there anything else that uh, you you see a lot, or is it? Is, a, is is the bulk of it sort of these these enterprise type uh, governance features? Is there is there any? I mean, are you dealing with um, formulas that aren't working or models that uh, that are broken? Um, you know, how, how how does it how does the diversity of your work look like on any one day? Yeah, so, so uh, not yet, <laughs> because uh, as a technical specialist in Microsoft is defined a pre-sales role, meaning I'm just in a pre-sales phase, uh, helping all uh, all kind of my customers has mentioned. So this means, um, I don't know, anything that has uh, to do with some technical questions. So what is Power BI? What is Power BI Premium? How can I enable bring your own key? Stuff like this, for example. Um, I do also run POCs with my customers, but once when it comes to implementation or really, let's call it really hands-on stuff on a production environment, this is something that I am not allowed or I'm supposed to do. This is something that we go to, to partners like Enterprise DNA, for example, or the Microsoft services and, and hand over to it so that uh, the partner or Microsoft services can, can handle it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. And um, like, what is it like being um, uh, involved internally with Microsoft and the communication that you get around around the Power Platform? Do you get do you get sort of a heads up of, of the latest and greatest and some of the um, ideas that are flowing around um, uh, about things that, that that are coming out soon? Is it is it um, is there good you know good communication around that sort of stuff? Mm -hmm. So yes, and probably no at the same time. And um, because on some features we we do get a heads up, and we also get involved from the product group saying, "Hey, uh, we do have something uh, on the roadmap which will come up, let's let's say in six months." Uh, but internally, we can already test it. Please give us some feedback. So the internal first feedback round uh, is provided then from from technical guys like like me. Mm -hmm. uh, but just to, to make it clear, it's, it's not for every feature, not everything. So as an example, uh, we knew about data marts a little bit earlier than the market, for example, but there are also stuff that even my customers knows before I do, because uh, some customers are, are more engaged with the product group and they have better insights than I do sometimes. So it's yeah. not always the case, yeah, but but in some cases, yes, we, we do got some insights. But Definitely the be the biggest benefit of being an employee at Microsoft is to have the, the direct contact with the product group. Meaning if I have a question, meaning if there is some, some good feedback from a, from a customer or we have some really big issues or whatever, uh, I can always reach directly out to my product group. So guys like Adam Sexton, Patrick LeBlanc, for example, from Guy in the Cube. And this is definitely a perk in working for Microsoft. Yeah, nice, nice. Um... Like you'd, you'd have to give a lot of credit to Microsoft for listening to customers. Like um, you know, they, they really have um, made all the enhancements that are, that a lot of you know the, the bulk of customers are asking for, right? Particularly on the enterprise side. So obviously that communication link is um, is working pretty well, um, or they're at least you know onboarding a lot of the feedback that they get and, and trying to prioritize the, the the main ones they think are going to make a big impact, but also the main ones that are probably going to make uh, make more money too. So. That makes that makes complete sense. Um, <laughs> now, um, uh, I, I've got a specific question for you. What what is your thoughts on data marts? Like, what is going on there? It's it's just in preview at the moment, and we're we're fielding quite a few questions about it. Um, and really, not you know, we're we're, we're not recommending it or, or anything. Not changing our doc documentation that we we put together just yet because it's just in preview. But what what are your thoughts on it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we need a little bit of time to figure out where it suits perfectly fine. Because um, right now, if, from a theory point of view, I, f I find it pretty nice. Because um, with, with data marts, you will be enabled as a, as a 
let's say power user as a department to create uh, let's let's call it low code SQL databases uh, but on the other hand, it also can be a little bit tricky because if everyone can create, so uh, it doesn't mean that the databases or the data marts in this case will be um, properly managed, will be properly set up and everything behind the scene will work as expected. So uh, just because it's a low code, no code variation of creating databases, it doesn't mean that everyone should be enabled to do so. And what I mean with that is, um, working in the bi aspects for, for for many years right now and everything that that comes from a low code perspective is is nice at the beginning but then when it comes to hey i have some issues with performance hey something is not working it's going to be a little bit tricky because once you get there the low code approach is not probably the best approach that this, this is from what i experienced so far yeah. um what I would suggest right now is, um, if you wish, you can test it. I mean, it's, it's public preview, it's free to use right now. So therefore feel free to test it. But I wouldn't bet everything right now on data marts, uh, meaning if you have a data flow, if you have a data set that is running, up and running, and you're perfectly fine with it, I wouldn't go and change it just because it's a new kid in the block. I would have it as it is and test it. Probably think of uh, of use cases where you can use it in future. But for enterprise customers, I would definitely wait for production environments uh, until it's GA and and really fully supported. Yeah, because you got you've got a lot of options now, right? And I, I think it can like obviously there's use cases for all of these different options, um, but it can get honestly like a little bit confusing. I mean, you got data sets, data flows soon data marts you've got dataverse as well and then you've got you know your, your sql database and all, all that like i i do feel you know th there is obviously a reason why and there's it's probably from feedback and things like that why they're doing this but um do you think do you, can you appreciate that there can be a little confusion i mean you you probably feel a, a few calls like that right <laughs> yes definitely and i mean my, my answer is more or less always the same it's like it's the good and the bad at the same time because on one hand you have all the choices and can really choose what suits you best but on yeah. the other hand it can be confusing choosing from all these options because uh, probably on and this is what i can totally understand as a customer i just wish to 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 have like one choice or microsoft telling me this is the best way to go please go this way and mm. sometimes it's just not that easy mm. and I mean, there are differences between data flows, data sets, data marts, or even dataverse, and every one of, of, of these, uh, let's call it features or solutions has, of, of course, um, some benefits. But yeah, I, I think customers um, or everyone who wants to use it um, has to, to be informed what are the differences, where are the limits, and what kind of use case you can cover with what kind of, of feature, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, nice, nice. And so you're moving to be a uh, a cloud architect. Is that, yes, is that, cloud, is, solu cloud solution cloud architect, architect is the term. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> nice. And so maybe maybe explain a little bit about what's involved in in that sort of role um, in sure. contrast to what you're doing now. Sure. So as a technical specialist, what I'm doing right now, um, as mentioned, it's a pre-sales role. And as a cloud solution architect, I'm moving into a post-sales role, meaning I'm helping more with the adoption of, of uh, services that customers has already bought. And I'm then really doing more hands-on as well. And right now as a techie, uh, technical specialist, I'm covering, let's say, only Power BI. And as a cloud solution architect, I will be uh, still focusing on Power BI, but also doing some uh, Azure signups and Azure purview uh, topics. Right. Nice. What about other pl Power Platform tools like Power Apps and Power Automates and, and uh, some of the other ones uh, that are coming, that are maturing, I would say? <laughs> so... Um, Internally, uh, we have a split between, let's say, Power BI and the rest of the Power Platform. So Power BI sits uh, from an organizational point of view in the Modern Work team. Modern Work uh, means like Teams and Security and Endpoint and Power BI. And the rest of the Power Platform is sitting in the BizApps team. BizApps team is, is Dynamics, Dynamics 365, and mm -hmm. Power Apps, Power, Plat uh, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agent. Mm -hmm. So there is a little bit a split, even if we say Power Platform as one. But honestly speaking, even if we if we look a little bit behind the scene, it's not really one platform because 
just purely from a governance or administration point of view, there are some things that all that are already um, covered from one administration um, uh, site, like the gateway, for example, but everything else is separated. So if you wish to administer Power BI, you have a Power BI um, admin tenant uh, or admin settings, and you do it separately, comparing it to Power Apps, for example. Mm -hmm. So, and probably to answer the question then, uh, from a CSA point of view, I will not really cover Power Apps and all the other stuff from Power Platform. This is done by BizApps team, but nevertheless, I'm, I'm still uh, have some some know, uh, know how about it because uh, I got a lot of questions. For example, can we do write back from Power BI? And this is purely with Power BI not possible. But if we integrate it with Power Apps, then you you have a way to write back to to your data. So therefore, I have as well some some know how there. Yeah, right. Nice, nice. And so, when in this um, cloud um, solution architect role, are you? Um, like when when you hear that term, you're thinking, okay, you're you're creating sort of um, you know architectural diagrams of, uh, of of what's going on in the cloud, or are you actually getting your hands uh, into it and actually helping uh, set up things in Azure and um, and uh, gateways and um, Power BI setups, etc. As well. So it's really both. Uh, so it's it's really about uh, showing and, and discussing architecture with uh, with my customers and and based on the requirements, telling them, look, this is what I would uh, suggest you. This is what I would I go for. Uh, and on top, because it's a post sales role, also helping then the customers. Uh, there will still be a little bit of difference between helping customers in a test environment and production environment, because production environment is still covered by Microsoft services and partners, but everything before, let's say, this is something that, uh, that as a CSA cloud solution architect, I can do then. Nice, nice. Um, and so, uh, just um, switching a little bit, what are what are some of the things that um, ex yeah, have, have have really excited you about uh, what Microsoft have been doing with Power BI, like you know personally or or just with discussions within your team? Like what what, are, what is even discussion with your customers? Like what what are the exciting things that um, have been happening recently and and that you personally like? Mm -hmm. So. There are a few things. Um, one of one of the most things that excite me is, um, as as you mentioned, it we are listening to the customers and to the feedback that we got. And I think Power BI is the first Microsoft product that we really have like a monthly update cycle. That we have a ideas website where people can post ideas and votes for it. Where we really have some more or less direct customer feedback to the product group, implementing the new features based on this uh, feedback from customers. And as mentioned, as far as I know, this is one of the first uh, services, first products that we really implemented such kind of a feedback loop. And based on this feedback loop, um, all the features that we are implementing, I mean, in the last, yeah, you, you mentioned also like in the last 18 months, we, we implemented um, hybrid tables, we implemented um, uh, direct query possibility with, with um, uh, tabular models, so analyze services and the data sets. Uh, we, uh, we also opened up XML endpoint. We have Power BI REST API. So there are a lot of things where we really see we want to enable everyone to, to to work with it, not only from a reporting point of view, so not only for end users to create reports, but also from an enterprise point of view, um, talking about scalability, talking about administration, governance, and everything that has to do with it. And mm -hmm. this is what amazes me a lot. And even when, when we get some monthly update and when I, when I watch the videos um, explaining what kind of updates we have, I'm sometimes surprised how many features we've implemented in just a month and mm -hmm. what kind of features we have implemented. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you think about, you know, some of these features, I mean, they're not they're not small things like the the actual development in behind the scenes to have it seamlessly work within everything else that's going on with Power BI must be um a uh, a technical, you know, a real technical challenge. Like how how big is the team that works on this stuff? Like do you, do you have much insight into that? Unfortunately, not. Uh, I know there are there are a few people, of course, working on it, but I really don't have insights how many people we have. But what mm -hmm. I can tell is we are hiring since like half year, and I see every month internal communication like, hey, we have like five new people. Hey, we have like four new people again. <laughs> so the team is raising. <laughs> like, is this like in development roles or like product roles or um, just across the board? 
Um, I mean, it's it's more or less everything from product management to to developers to really um, like more or less everything. Wow! Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, you can see, like, I, I remember looking at a, a chart of build. I think Satya Nadella put up a chart just of like the trajectory of Power Apps, like usage, and it was literally like exponential. So, uh, like, you'd have to think that that Power BI is is, is kind of similar. And I mean, like. Anecdotally, we we can see that as well. Like just the um, searches on our website, the, the people the people we're talking to, um, and um, the, the customers we have. Like it's all it's all growing. Right? Like it's, it's it's a really big wave to be on, isn't it? Um, it's really really amazing how it's evolved over over the last six or seven years from um, its first iteration in its in its uh, re released form. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, we have to be honest, at the beginning, once it, it was announced, I think it was 2015, it was, a, let's say, a nice, clicky uh, reporting tool. Yeah. But I, I remember in the first conference when it was announced, uh, one of the first questions I had, I had was like, can I change the color from a, bar, from a bar chart? And the answer was like, not yet. And I mean, if you think, if you think about it, how far we get from this point it, it's really amazing because yeah as mentioned like five, six seven years ago it was more like clicky, uh, clicky tool yeah. not really enterprise ready just for end users to let's say play around with it and then like four years ago we started with with really enterprise readiness and i would say things three three good years we're really there having an enterprise ready solution not only for end users but as well for for administration and and yeah everything around that has to do with with a bi tool it should, yeah with a bi tool i i have to laugh at the colors i mean i remember having to cut change like every individual color in my theme for about two and a half years it was <laughs> oh my god it was just driving me insane um and then finally we got a theme which was very um um you know um it had very you couldn't really do too much like the, the theming has improved a lot um of, of late i think it can honestly be improved more um but uh but it has, it has improved a lot i mean that's just just one aspect of of just just many um but you always i think like from the from the early days like you could always have a good bet that microsoft um were going to be big in the space right like they would they what they wanted to win and they were going to invest uh, until they won it, basically, like it was just such going to be such a crucial part. Like the, I remember, um, I think one of the head, uh, head, um, one of the senior executives at Microsoft said that Power BI was the tip of the spear of everything um, in Azure, basically. And I was like, okay, well, they're, they're going to do absolutely everything to win, right? Like Azure is their, um, you know, is their is sort of going to be their cash cow for the next like twenty years. So um so yeah like i, I think it was a, a pretty big bet and and they've, they've doubled down on it for sure because you can just see you know that they're they're basically covering every use case you could ever imagine around like embedding a data culture within your organization yes definitely and i mean power bi is also a, a thankful tool as especially, especially as a seller because you can show just in a few minutes how it can look like, how can our report look like. And because it's visual, you can really imagine it. And then from Power BI, you can talk about so many different things. So for example, security, how can you secure your data? So you, you are then talking about security in general, uh, as mentioned, bring your own key, for example, Azure additional, uh, con um, Azure, <laughs> AAD conditional access, Azure Active Directory conditional access. So, uh, or you're going to talk about um, data platforms. So, uh, how is your data stored? Uh, do you need to optimize it? Uh, so, we have Azure Synapse, for example, or governance. Where is my data coming from? You have to have a lineage view, for example, or, or data masking. So, you talk about Azure Purview. And these are all the topics that you can just purely talk coming from Power BI. Yeah. And this is the beauty of it. And and I absolutely agree. We we really do invest a lot in Power BI, but we also see a lot of, of usage and, and growth within the Power BI space. Yeah. And I think um, you, 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 you like to really good examples of sort of the back end um, stuff, but even sort of the front end integrations. I'm loving like what's been happening there. Like, you know, my team lives in Microsoft Teams, for example, just like probably like all Office 365 users um, are, um, you know, becoming, you know, use, using it, you know, similarly. And the fact that you can jump into Power BI, you can jump into specific Power Apps um, all within that one system is is huge, right? And then also recently um, the PowerPoint integration, 
Um, I'm sure there's going to be more integration into Outlook coming soon. You know, all of that stuff is super exciting. Um, you know, up and down, up and down the stack, right? So, um, you know, it's just like I, I, I always thought this, but it, it's it's truly like it is kind of unbeatable um, in terms of like how embedded it can be within your daily workflow. And I think that's a huge selling point, um, a huge selling point to. Um, not only use Power BI, but also just optimize Power BI, right? Like if you if you've got an Office three sixty five tenant, is 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 trying to optimize your implementation so you can get like the most out of it and be really uh, far more immersed in your data. Yeah, de- definitely, and I love as well the PowerPoint integration because previously, if you wish to integrate in PowerPoint, you you will always have let's say a screenshot or a picture of your report, Mm -hmm. which is not so nice, meaning um, Power BI is here for a dynamic approach. So you wish to have a click and a filter right away. And now you can do so in PowerPoint. So pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. I I think it's a good start. And um, I think, um, yeah, like the way, like some of the things, and it'll be interesting to see what you think about like where things are going. But one of the things that I, you know, I'm really excited like to hopefully see around more integrations is just, you know, being able to utilize individual elements within a Power BI report, like a visualization and and being able to uh, repurpose that in a website or in an an email or in a Microsoft Teams chat to just be able to call upon those individual elements a lot quicker. Um, And, you know, you'd have to think that's the way that things are going. Like these, these are just some of the early steps in that, um, in that roadmap, but you know, that's going to be quite even more like that's going to be pretty transformational, right? You, you, your your Power BI online services is is is, is really your um, your analytics engine, basically, right? And then and then you can you can get elements of it wherever you are at, um, you know, on your phone even maybe like um, as a text message or something. I, I don't know. Like that's just um, you know, high, high level thinking. But you know, what, what do you think about that? Is that do you think that that is that is in the um, you know that is in the vision, the, the the vision of what Power BI can become. Yes, I, I think so. Especially if you, if you think about, let's say, more or less future stuff like Hololens. I know Power BI is already integrated in Hololens, but I can imagine that you also can have like uh, your phone, and let's say through your camera off the phone have a VR environment, and within there you can then pin your dashboard wherever you you wish to pin it, and then you can just look through your camera and have the report on there. Um, I'm sure such things will come, and as you mentioned, um, having just some elements that you can pin out easily and and embed it somewhere i think these are the stuff that that uh, should also be available soon not not telling that we're working on it i I really don't know it but i'm expecting it because i see where we are going with the embedded stuff i mean we can embed it like more or less everywhere in the office space just by uh, two three clicks and if you work with power bi embedded and you're a developer you can even embed it in your own um, environment or own portal uh, wherever you wish. And yes, there is possible then to to embed just one visual, but as mentioned, you have to be then a developer and it's not that easy to to embed it in Teams, in PowerPoint or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I think I think that, that if I can sort of uh, no-code or low-code that aspect of things, I think that would be another killer um, application um, for, for sure. You mentioned Power BI Embedded. I'm interested. Is there... Um, has there been a a a, very, a a wide adoption of Power BI embedded? Like, have you seen um, a diverse range of use cases for that solution? <laughs> more and more. Um, at the beginning, when I started the Microsoft, I'm working now four years at Microsoft. Uh, there has been just a few questions about Power BI embedded. I would say probably once a month, once every uh, two months. But right now uh, we got um, more and more questions. It's it's for sure, for sure once a week or once every few days where I got some questions about Power BI. Hey, how can we do so? Hey, how can we do that? And what I love about this is that the if you're not so familiar with Power BI, you will not tell at the end that is Power BI behind because it's really integrated in your own uh, portal, in your own website, wherever it is. And you have this dynamic approach, of course, with, with Power BI, as you know, but it's it's in in such a way integrated that it, it really feels seamless integration into, into your website. Mm. Yeah, nice, nice. And um, like... What are some examples of um, apps or 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 industries where you've seen that these have been um, quite a, quite well used? 
um, one customer of mine is integrated into the into his own portal, um, and he's um, managing airports uh, around the world. So, meaning, uh, let's say you are. US Airways or whatever. Um, and you as a customer of US Airways, you wish to see where your baggage is. So you can log into the website and have a Power BI report showing you, hey, uh, your current status is you checked in your bag. The next step is it will be on the flight number, blah, blah, blah. And then it will go to your destination and then you will drop it off there. And this is visually done with Power BI. And obviously, um, because the, uh, the, the customer of mine managing different kind of, um, of companies, they have to uh, scale on one hand. They have to talk about security, meaning US Airways cannot see American Airlines, for example. And obviously, each customer can only see his own data. And so how, go, how can you manage that? How can you uh, make it easy and, as mentioned, scalable for my customer to, to make it as easy as possible? Yeah, I love that use case because, um, you know, instead of uh, so, say you got like 20 customers, you know, you don't want to have to be managing 20 different reports, right? Like you just want to have this one master report linked up to the data source. Uh, and then when someone logs in, they've got that security overlay that 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 automatically filters the report for them, right? And so yes. um, that, that to me is a, a, a brilliant um, example of like how Power BI Embedded can be used uh, really, really well. Um, I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Power BI is it's not something that 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 any prize DNA we've um, we've really got into it in any in any depth. But 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 um, yeah, I, I think it's maybe maybe because you know our, our customers haven't really um, used it used it that much in the past. But you know that that um, it's, it's quite exciting about how that's matured as well. Um, I mm. I remember early on um, that I think the pricing model changed about three or four times uh, when Power BI embedded, which kind of uh, kind of put me off it a little bit. But um, maybe that's settled uh, settled now. So uh, so it's a lot 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 e easier to um, to understand and and, and and I guess manage your 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 budgets um, around. Yes, and uh, I mean talking about licensing. I know Microsoft has some. Uh, let's say, adventures with licensing, and especially with, with other spaces. But personally, I think Power BI is, is really an easy licensing model comparing it to, to other stuff. I mean, you can have a pro license and go with it. We have premium, we have Power BI embedded, and there is not much more. And if I compare it, for example, with, I don't know, with Dynamics, where you have like 100 different licenses, and depending on which kind of license you have, you have different kind of limitations, mm -hmm. it's going to get uh complicated pretty fast yeah 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 look i i i, I definitely can't disagree with that I, I think yeah on the whole right like if you're a you know, organization of any size the fact i've always thought so the fact that you can get access to basically you know every big feature in power bi to get you um creating more immersion in your data with just like some ten dollar a month or twelve dollar a month like license I mean, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous how cheap it is. Um, yeah, obviously, as you sort of move up the scale to a much bigger deployment, there's there's a lot of additional um, features and, and and maybe costs involved there. But you know, if you're a small business with five to ten users, I mean, you're literally and, and you can get everyone upskilled on how to actually use it. I mean, your your expense line is like under two hundred dollars a month, like for this amazing yeah. tool. It's just crazy, absolutely crazy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so um, tell me about a little bit more about what you do in the community. So you've got sort of the, the Power BI user group in the background there. So um, I'm, I'm interested to know how um, involved you are there and the things that you like doing um, within the community. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I love the community stuff because I'm all about uh, sharing is caring. And uh, through the community, this is what, what I can achieve at the end. And uh, probably if, if you can see it um, in my background, I have the Power BI user group in Switzerland. I'm leading it together with my colleague of mine, Dennis. Um, and this is the biggest user group for Power BI here in Switzerland with 1,600, 600-ish uh, people. And what we do is we run on a monthly base every first Thursday of the month from 4 to 6 p.m. Swiss time, uh, mm -hmm. this community. And in the beginning, I'm always talking about the latest and greatest about Power BI. And then we try to invite 
at least one or two external speakers. So when I say external, I mean no Microsoft is <laughs> uh, to talk about Power BI related stuff. And this could be anything. So from, um, I don't know, Zebra BI, for example, they explained uh, their, their uh, visual or we have some use cases so customers coming to to uh, to the user group uh, showing them what they have achieved with power bi um i don't know so anything power bi related and i know in september if i'm not wrong uh, we'll have someone talking about custom visuals what is the road to certify a visual uh, so really interesting from my point of view, and really different aspects. And what I do is I invite all customers, all partners, all enthusiasts, whoever wishes to join to the community as well, because it's open, it's free, and you can really learn a lot. And one of the biggest achievements I have to say is what we did because of the community is the so-called Power BI Championship. We just finished it like two weeks ago. Uh, no, one week ago, sorry. And uh, the championship was all about the community itself, so giving something back. And the main idea was to provide a challenge for the whole community, same challenge, and every one of them who wished to participate uh, had to create a report on top. And then uh, the three of us within Microsoft, so me and then two other colleagues, we rated all the solutions, which was pretty, pretty hard. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then at the end, there was a winner. And yeah, he's now, or, or the team is now the champion of Power BI in Switzerland. And the feedback was uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah the feedback was really awesome. And I hope we can we can redo that again next year. Yeah, that's that's that, that's really cool. I actually think I might have seen a previous iteration. Have you done it before? Or was that the first one? Uh, yeah, I have to to give kudos to my Danish team because the 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 team in Denmark they invented the Power BI Championship uh, last year. Yeah, right. and internally they they pitched it uh, in an internal call, and yeah. I liked the idea pretty much. So I tried to to uh, replicate it here in Switzerland as well. Yeah, nice. Like we run some challenges at Enterprise DNA for our community and we we see it as sort of like the ultimate project-based learning experience. And it's so good to just test out a, a whole range of new features or techniques that you've been learning, um, but also see and learn from others, like get inspired by what others are doing. And so I imagine that that was a sort of similar scenario to what you guys had. Yes, definitely. I mean, what, what amazed me is or are two things. First of all, uh, the creativity of of each team and each individual because everyone had more or less the same challenge but we got so many different kind of reports so many kind uh, so many different kind of, of of solutions and different ways to achieve it. it it was just unbelievable and the other thing that amazed me was how quick it was uh, because we gave them just five days Mm. And within five days, they had to create a data model. They can, they could enhance the data model with some other open data if they wish to do so and create on top a, a report. And it was really, really great to see what kind of reports and solutions they, they had uh, created. And for those who are interested in, I, I created a blog post about it and shared the top 10 PBIX files on power, uh, pbiguyblog.com. Feel free to go out there and Yes, and, and search it. Um, no, I haven't in my background, <laughs> but uh, it's pbiguyblog.com. Uh, and the first post you see is now about the Power BI Championship. Cool. I just have and, uh, yes. So, so pbiblog.com, is that it? Uh, no, pbiguyblog. PBI. Bar. Or give, give me a second. Uh, you can also go to aka. Uh, dot ms slash pbi guy blog and this is also uh an aka link to to uh, redirect and to my blog i'm just having a look because I'm, I'm keen to see oh it's on linkedin okay cool um um i won't i won't log into linkedin while we're while we're here um that's um that's really cool and if you don't like what was the scenario what was the scenario that uh you worked through Mm -hmm. um, we had two data sets. One was about the uh, Swiss rental prices in, in, yeah, in Switzerland, obviously. Uh, so by apartment size, by uh, number of rooms, by, is divided by canton. Canton is like um, yeah, each, each county in, in, in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And the other scenario was an open data set coming from WHO. 
uh, about alcohol consumption uh, and so, some other stuff where people could choose from. So they, they could choose between the rental prices or the uh, WHO data set. And they had the choice to add on more data sets if they wish to do so to, to enhance the data model and to enhance the report experience at the end. Mm-hmm. And we decided to just give them the data set with no business case, with no you know framework or whatever. We've been there like, hey, here it is. Build whatever you wish and mm-hmm. amaze us. Yeah. And what we did is we tried to, to score at the end each solution as objective as possible. So we had some different kinds of categories. For example, uh, how is the data model? Uh, how is the layout? Uh, what kind of features have been used? Um, is there a mobile layout behind? Um, so everything more or less Power BI related. And then we rated it from 1 to 10. And each category had his own weighting. And based on that, uh, you had then at the end a, a ranking. And to make it even more complicated and more objective, um, based on the first ranking, we invited the top 10 to the finals. And the top 10 had then to do a LinkedIn post to get some likes and social media boost. Uh, because we, we're here like, even if you have the best Power BI report in the world, if people do not like it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be hard that people are going to use it and, and, and you could not sell it. So mm-hmm. this is the main idea behind the LinkedIn post. And each individual and each team had also to do a live demo in front of us, uh, presenting their solution in just 10 minutes. So mm-hmm. you have to be quick on the point to say uh, why is your solution so good and why should we invest in your solution at the end. Mm-hmm. And everything was also then weighted and uh, was a part of the total score at the end. Mm. Yep. Nice. No, that's, that sounds really comprehensive um, in terms of a championship. I like it. Uh, the, the, the live demonstration, the, the live uh, selling of your, of, of your products are a really good idea as well. Um, yeah. The... Um, uh, what was I gonna? I was gonna ask something interesting around that. Um, what were the? What were some of the, the the key attributes to the best reports you saw? Like what 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 did you like? Was it the design? Was it the analysis? Was it the story? Um, what what was what what do you like? We 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 because we've run a lot of challenges. I think we've run over twenty, and we we've sort of come up with some best practices. But I'm 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 interested to know if they align with what you learned from Mark mm-hmm. or like scoring all of these reports. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, from a from a layer perspective, um, it's pretty obvious that that you have some things that that you like or don't like. So, therefore, it's it, it's not always easy to say this is the best layout because it's really a little bit depending as well on the audience and on the people who are looking at the report. And that's also the reason why there are three of us in the jury to make sure it's not just one judge and one preference. And what we saw is a nice and clean layout uh, is the best way to go. So not to have like 20, 20 visuals on one page, probably it's better to have like a navigation and have multiple pages split up with just a few visuals on each page. Mm. Um, talking about uh, the backend, so the data model, um, what, what I saw as well is we have to teach a little bit more about best practices. So for example, to parameterize data sources uh, or to really set up the data types for each column um, to get rid of columns that you do not use in your column uh, in your data model or to to set a filter if you just using data let's say from 2015 onwards you don't need the rest of the data so filter it out in the power query stuff like this can really improve your your data model and improve your your performance of the report in general and when it comes to scoring, and this is what I mentioned in the finals as well, um, just because someone is not in the top three, for example, it doesn't mean the report is bad. And, um, in, in contrary, the, all the reports have been all uh, really, really great. And even some reports just didn't make it to the top 10 because of small details. So for example, someone had a great report, but the data model was really bad. So like uh, didn't set up the data types and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And this is what we mentioned during the finals. Like we really looked at everything, meaning 
Is the mobile layout okay? So not, can I access it through my mobile phone? Is the data set okay? Did you follow best practices? If so, um, how is the relationship model? If you use DACs, how well have you documented your DACs? Because just because you have DACs, it doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> and stuff like this uh, made our life really hard to, to judge and score at the end. But I think the learning experience for every one of us, so not only for the jury, but also for the community who participated, has been immense because everyone presented their solution. And the, the, this is where the magic happens. Everyone in the room was like, oh, this is a nice idea. Oh, I haven't thought about it. This is something I'm going to use probably in my next report. And then after the championship, we, we had like a more or less an upper row. Everyone cheats chested with each other. How did you do that? How did you do this? And this is the beauty of a community to to really share and grow together. Yeah, I totally agree. Like uh, in terms of a learning experience, like that challenge environment that we we put on, very similar to what you're um, you're outlining, is is one of the best learning experiences because you can actually just very quickly see in real like in a real application of like how some of these great techniques can be utilized, particularly around navigations, um, bookmarks, selections. Um, um like uh custom visuals or uh charticulator um dnb visuals like you know, all of these all of these great little things that you know aren't immediately obvious like you can really really learn these techniques and then do a little bit of a more of a deep dive and then you know or very soon you've got those skills as well um so you know the, the the practical application of it is is such a um a key part of of quality um and um effective learning i think Definitely, yes. And I mean, just to point one solution out, which I also never thought about is they created one page, but one big page where you have to scroll down. Yeah. And while scrolling, you have like a path which you have to follow. And they used field parameters on the way where you can put in like, uh, I wish to have uh, a room or an apartment with four rooms. So you can put in four. Then you scroll further down and then you can say, okay, my budget is like, whatever 2000 francs or whatever it was then you can further scroll down and at the end of your of your path you have then like a a, a map where they suggest to to look for an apartment based on your parameters given and this is also a nice way with, which i never thought about is it's, it's like an application it's not really a report it's really like an application where you can put in some data scrolling down and then you have a suggestion at the end yeah no look uh, funny funny you say that because my whole philosophy on building Power BI reports is I've, I've, I've got this sort of term of application-like report development. Um, that's that's sort of my, my my way I like to think about report development because, you know, you, you got to, I think you've got to think bigger than just a, um, you know, re recreating a PowerPoint uh, report inside of Power BI now. Like you actually want to build a reporting application, something that's sort of like application-like. The one you've described is, is that, that sounds very, very creative, but there's, you know, a diverse range of iterations that you could do off that just with really quality navigation, good theming, um, good uh, you know, good grid patterns, um, good alignment in your visuals uh, within grid patterns. You know, there's um, clear clear visuals, clear titles. You know, these are some some key things that 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 are very um, easy to implement in a in a in a workflow of of developing a Power BI report, and then very quickly you've got an application. You've got a fantastic application that um, yeah. that feels like you're immer you're in some sort of like web based app. Like it, it really it really does feel that way. So yeah. you know that's that's something that we really promote, and and I think it's um, was hard. Sounds like it was highlighted um, in what you guys did as well. Yes, yes. And talking about application, it, it's funny because I had a partner who who was uh, just created a, uh, a few years ago and they haven't built a website from the beginning. And what they did is they created a Power BI report and used the publish to web feature. And they just bought in the domain and made a, a redirection to the Power BI URL, which was also <laughs> a nice idea. Funny. So Funny. You, have a, you have a website, which is more or less a Power BI report. <laughs> so they, they actually had the domain, but they redirected it. The domain, that's, that's so funny. Because the, the links in um, the, the, the published to web, um, they're enormous. Like they, they go across yes. your entire um, URL uh, text bar, right? So, um, but that is, that is actually, seriously, good idea. Like, so, so you yeah. can actually create sort of like, uh, you could create a web-based application. I mean, it would be public, obviously. Um, but you would uh, you would you would direct um, people to it via 
a proper URL through a redirect. That's that's smart. Yeah. I, I like it. I like it. I've never yeah, heard of it. Me too. I, I loved it. And it's free. The only thing you have to to buy is the domain. But that's obvious if you if you need a website, it's it's also a good idea to have a domain. And yeah, you can build your own website with a Power BI report and use the free published web feature. <laughs> Hey, here, here is a big tip if you are um, listening and you're looking for a job. If you want to uh, impress someone with uh, with your Power BI skills, I would do exactly that, right? I would build a Power BI, I would build my CV probably in Power BI and I would link it to some um, URL with my name and redirect it. And then someone, if they were looking me up, would be able to experience, to see all of my details and experience and skills like in a, um, in a Power BI report, just like that. I mean, that is so it's sort of out, out of the box a little bit, but you know, if you want to you, you want to get a job with Power BI, um, uh, a, high, a, a well-paying one, like that's a really smart idea. Yeah, definitely yes. <laughs> nice and um, cool. Okay, well, yeah. Look, I, I really, I really enjoyed diving into um, into into that championship that, um, that 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 you put together. That's a a really good idea and look and, and, and you know we've had similar ideas in terms of you know this is some good uh, good learning experience good way to sort of uh, get back to the community and um and, inv- and involve the community in something um collective that uh, that everyone can learn from so so it's a nice work nice work on uh, on that is there any um look we're, we're, i think we're sort of getting to the end here um really enjoyed our uh, our chat and uh, it's very early for Christian in, in the morning. So um, I'll, I, I mentioned this before we got on, but um, you know, thanks, uh, thanks for taking taking this call early in your day. Is there anything else like you, you're 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 excited about, or like um, that you do you think would be worth um, mentioning about? You know what you've done, what you're doing. Uh, maybe maybe um, yeah, maybe a little bit about your your um, Power BI guy um, um, <laughs> uh, a logo and, and you know, or, or what what you're doing there. Sure. Um, I mean, um, personally, I, I started a blog, as, as mentioned, like, what is it, half a year ago, one year ago, not, not pretty sure. And my main idea is not to blog about uh, things that you probably don't know, because it, it's going to be hard to find something that the whole world doesn't know. <laughs> uh, so the blog for myself or the block is more for myself for like a documentation process. So everything that I have seen and done, which is worth sharing, I get, I think, and worth keeping it somewhere, this is what I'm going to post about it on my blog. And I can encourage everyone who works with Power BI to do the same and try to, to blog about it because sometimes just because you know it and just because you think everyone knows it it's not the case so therefore even the small things like how to create tooltips or how to create i don't know bookmarks or whatever it could be helpful to blog about it if you have a way to to um to show others how you do it how you did it because it could be different from what others have seen it could be different from what we see in the documentation so this is something that i could encourage everyone uh, to do and and yeah to blog about your your experience and on top if you're new to power bi what i can also encourage you to do is go to microsoft learn go to um power bi dashboard in a day workshops and start uh, really doing hands-on stuff because it's easy to start with it's easy to learn uh, but if you wish to be a professional, let's say, an enhanced uh, user, uh, there is a little bit a hard way because you would need to know about data analytics, about data modeling and stuff like that. But I'm sure if you're keen to learn, uh, it's pretty easy and it's it's awesome to learn. Yeah. And look, I'd, I'd have to plug Enterprise DNA's uh, free uh, beginner content as well. Um, but then if you want to you know, get really serious, we've obviously got our, um, our membership platform uh, or COE platform for corporates as well. Um, and, and so where, where can people find you if they want to they reach out or if they um, want to um, you know, um, get to know you a little bit better? Where, what, what's the best way? Easiest way is, is, is through LinkedIn or through through the redirection to my LinkedIn profile is aka dot ms slash pbi guy and you will be uh, redirected directly to my linkedin profile i think that's the easiest way feel free to reach out to me i hope i will not get one million messages like in the upcoming days but <laughs> uh, i 
I promise I try to answer all kind of questions. And this is also what I experienced through my blog. People are writing me with some um, with some questions they had or they, they have some issues. And I, I try to answer all of them. I can promise to do it right away or within a day or two, but at least I, I keep it on my on my on my backlog, let's say, and, and for sure I'm gonna answer you. Nice one, nice one. Well it's um yeah. it's great to um you know you seem like super super committed uh to, to helping uh, a lot of people out in the community out. So it's it's awesome to be uh to be connected and um and really appreciate what uh, all the stuff you're doing there. So look, why don't we round off? I think we've had a gr- really great conversation, really appreciated all your insights and, and all of your thoughts. Um uh, yeah, some some really uh, it's good it's it's good to hear from someone within the um the mothership, you know, and um and 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 hear hear some of the uh, thoughts and insights uh, from uh, your experiences within there. So re- really, really appreciate it, Christian. And um, just, to, just to round off for, um, for everyone, thanks for tuning in. And uh, don't forget to subscribe on your, your favorite um, listening channel. Uh, we also put this uh, uh, these record- recordings um, up on our YouTube channel, the Enterprise DNA YouTube channel as well. Um, we've got a bit of a pa- back catalog at the moment. So uh, this might come out a little bit later than uh, the podcast version. But um, yeah, look, um, look, look forward to hearing all your feedback. And um, once again, thank you, Christian, for, for joining me today. Um, really, really enjoyed it. Sure. Thank you from my side as well. Much appreciated and hope to be your guest pretty soon as well. Yeah. <laughs> or again. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, definitely. I, I, I can definitely see, uh, particularly as uh, your role um, evolves uh, at Microsoft, you know, we'll, 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 we will definitely um, uh, enjoy um, chatting again. I, I can I can definitely yeah. see that. So, so we'll, we'll, love we'll, so. We'll, we'll circle back uh, at some time in the future. Okay, everyone, let's round off this one. Thanks, Christian. Thank you very much.